Hi there, my name is Sarah Pratt Martin and I'm an assistant professor of practice at Simmons University School of Library and Information Science. I'm so sorry that I can't be there with you in Cape Cod today, although don't feel too bad. I'm somewhere uh, warm and sunny. <laughs> and uh, I hope to get the opportunity to talk with some of you and hear from some of you. And I will share my contact information at the end of this short presentation. I wanna say, first of all, I'm really grateful for my two fellow panelists for uh, taking care of things in, in Cape Cod while I am not there uh, for um, coming up with the idea for this panel and also for taking part in what I'm about to talk about. So um, in my role here at Simmons, I'm not only a faculty member, but also the manager of curricular field experiences. So I'd love to share a little bit more about my role here uh, at Simmons and also the opportunities we help connect students with and perhaps where you come into play with that. So um, let's get started. So this presentation will cover specifically curricular field experiences here at Simmons, uh, as opposed to what I would call extracurricular opportunities. We offer two courses that have embedded field experiences as part of them. One is an introductory archives course, and the other is an advanced field experience course for any student in our program, regardless of their concentration. I'm really gonna focus more on the second, the advanced course, but I'll talk a little bit about the intro course, the archives course as well, in case some of you in the audience have any connection to your local history or genealogical department um, at your library, or maybe you have a colleague that is that you might be able to share this information with. So I'm specifically gonna discuss the courses, discuss the placement process, what supervisors' responsibilities are, and also project design. And I know that um, Jesse and Carrie are gonna talk about their own involvement here, so you'll learn a lot um, from their particular case study of how they've handled placements, projects, um, and supervisory roles. So in terms of curricular field experiences at SLIS, I place approximately 250 to 300 students in a given academic year, uh, which sounds like a lot, and I think that's because it is. <laughs> um, so these courses, the two courses I just briefly mentioned, are offered in the fall, spring, and summer semesters. However, LIS 438, which is our Introduction to Archival Theory and Practice course, is only offered in the fall and the spring. We found the course just really doesn't work in the summer, which is a shorter semester. Uh, there are three to four sections of that course offered in a given semester, both face-to-face -face in, in Boston and also at SLIS West out at Mount Holyoke. Uh, as well as online. And so I'm placing about 100 to 105, uh, 25 rather students uh, in the intro to archives course in a given semester. Um, so about 200 to 250 in a given academic year. Uh, LIS 512, which is our advanced field experience course is offered all three semesters, fall, spring and summer, and usually sees about 15 to 30 students enrolled per semester. Now this course is offered online only so we do have students that aren't in the Massachusetts or New England area. However, um, we do have a lot of students that are in that area. And uh, just because the course is online, it doesn't mean that students aren't in Massachusetts. It's just the only way we offer the course because we offer one section um, each semester and we want it to be inclusive of all of our students, which includes a large online only population. So the advanced field experience in LIS course is called um, LIS 512 by number. If you are a Simmons grad and familiar, uh, we used to have three different courses that have now been combined into one. Uh, those were LIS 501, which was for a field experience course or internship course for library students, 502, which was for archives, and 503, which was for cultural heritage. Now, when I joined the faculty full-time in 2019, uh, we didn't see the need to have these three distinct courses any longer because of enrollments and just because the outcomes and the learning objectives didn't seem to need to be divided by uh, concentration or area of interest. So now we have this one course that is in, includes advanced students from across our entire curriculum. As I mentioned before, this class is offered in the fall, spring and summer semesters, but only online. But we do have a fair number, if not majority number uh, in the Boston or Massachusetts area. Field work can begin week one of the semester. So in the spring, uh, that's around Martin Luther King Jr day that that first week. Um, we also in the summer, that's usually the first week of June. And then in the in the fall, we're looking at usually the first week of September. The course requires that students complete a minimum of 130 hours of field work that shakes out to about 10 to 15 hours in a given week. And that varies the fall and the spring. It's typically more like 10 hours because the semester is 14 weeks. 
Whereas the summer semester, which is 10 weeks, um, is typically more like 15 hours per week. But the scheduling is really up to the student and the site to just to determine, and it can be flexible as needed. What's important to note is that for this class, the actual completion of the field work, as well as supervisors evaluations, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, accounts for 40% of the student's course grade. So it is pretty significant. The other components of the student's course grade include a weekly journal that they post to and some written assignments and discussion, uh, online discussion that happens for the course. Uh, just because the course is online, I wanna share, doesn't mean that their field work has to be online. We find um, sites and projects that are local to students, which I'll talk about in a second. When it comes to projects, we really want this, them to reflect the advanced coursework that these students have completed in order to be eligible for this course, as well as their professional interests. And it's important to note that while compensation is not required to be a part of this um, program, we do allow compensation. And if you have the freedom to design compensation, uh, we typically ask that it's in the form of a stipend to offset perhaps travel, um, lunch, something like that, you know, the cost of gas or the cost of the train to get there, as opposed to hourly wages. However, we recognize that you might not have control and um, compensation is great. However, it can be, um, can be given out. <laughs> so in terms of the placement process, you're probably wondering how I do this. Well, first of all, I think it bears um, sharing that the course itself requires my permission. Uh, students have to have completed 18 credit hours or six courses, which is 50% of their entire program. We require 12 courses in the um, master's program. There are different ways that students can learn about placements or, or be given placements. One way is to market opportunities to students through our job line, which is something that um, Jess can talk about a little bit about the way BPL does this. Um, and allow sites to interview candidates in a way to make sure that the student is right for the particular project. Uh, and that the student meshes well with the environment, but also it really guarantees that you have students that are really truly interested in your project or projects um, in terms of placement. Otherwise, what students do is they complete profiles in our field experience management system, lovingly called FIXEMS, um, where they create or fill out a survey that includes information about where they live, their availability, perhaps they have a part-time job and they can't work on Tuesdays and Fridays, um, their transportation or access to transportation, whether they rely on the train, whether they have a car, um, et cetera, et cetera, and also their professional interests. So I really go about making sure to match students with projects that are professionally interesting to them. A lot of students take this course in their final semester. So this is really a stepping stone out of the program and into the field for them. And I want students to be given the opportunity to try on different roles uh, before they start to apply for full-time positions. In terms of supervisors, um, what happens is when students fill out those profiles, what I'll do is try to reach out to area institutions that I think would fit the bill. So if we had a student living um, in the back bay that was interested in teen librarianship, I would certainly reach out to the BPL Teen Central to see if this was a project or something they could take on. And I would maybe do the same for you. We've placed students all over Massachusetts in various library roles. Uh, and it just really depends on students enrollment in a given semester. In terms of if a supervisor, you know, if I reach out to an institution, they say yes. What supervisors then have to do is complete uh, their own information in our field experience management system by completing, creating an account, uh, completing an institution profile that then just lives in the account, in the system uh, in perpetuity and submit a specific project submission for that student for that given semester. Supervisors are asked to do two things. It's really about daily supervision as well as professional mentorship. So initially we want supervisors to be more hands-on with our students just to get them acclimated to the, to the place, not only to give them a tour uh, and introduce them around, but also to be more hands-on in terms of project expectations, et cetera, and truly be available whenever the student is on site to be the field instructor, be available for questions and guidance. Now, sometimes these field experiences are not in person, they are virtual. So we would ask that perhaps there's a scheduled weekly Zoom meeting where supervisors and students could connect and ask, and, you know, they could ask questions, they could seek guidance um, and just have regular check-ins to be more involved in the workflow or maybe be invited to staff meetings as appropriate 
Um, and we also want supervisors to provide professional mentorship. Be open to conversations with our students about the profession, that your experience in the profession, your work, maybe your career trajectory, um, as they're trying to navigate what life after Simmons will look like. And lastly, we ask that supervisors complete two short web-based evaluations of the student's progress, and that's also done through FIXOMS. We ask this for a um, midpoint report, midpoint evaluation rather, and also a final um, evaluation at the conclusion of the semester and the conclusion of their hours. In terms of project design, this is a little bit more challenging to discuss here and we don't have too much time. So I'll just quickly say that projects really vary just as the modalities do. So projects may look very different depending on your own priorities and needs at your institution, as well as the student's interests. And projects will look different if they're completed on site, if they're completed remotely, or if it's a hybrid arrangement. We really want the project specifically to relate to our SLIS curriculum, but moreover, we want the projects to be professional in nature as opposed to paraprofessional or too menial in nature. Um, ideally, these projects would connect with the student's interests, but also the priorities of your site. So it's a really a win-win. And truly, you can assign or come up with more than one project because we've found that 130 hours is ample time to really get a lot of things accomplished. So it might look like reference work, manning the um, reference desk or handling the chat. Uh, it might look like doing some collection development work in terms of assessing the growth or needs in a particular area. It might look like developing a summer reading program or a book talk or maybe a small display case in terms of the outreach for your institution. Uh, it may look like some cataloging or perhaps working with some of the technical services staff. But really it's flexible both at the beginning of the semester but also mid-semester because we know that maybe you'll design a project in January but then something comes down the pipeline in March that you weren't anticipating but it would be a great opportunity for the student. So we're certainly flexible in allowing new opportunities uh, for the student to become available. And the nice thing is that students complete these weekly journal entries so that I have a weekly means of checking in with the student to see what's going on for them to ask me questions and for them to get in touch and say, is this okay? Or here's an update, things have changed a little bit, I'm gonna be working on this. We also have students sometimes that anticipate working on a particular project, but then the technology they need is failing or the materials they need are on back order, et cetera. So we do see a lot of pivoting and that's just part of, part of the working world, right? We've all had to do it. Ultimately, we want the projects to result in some sort of deliverable which means just evidence that they can share with me of what they've done. Sometimes this is just a logbook in terms of reference work they've done, but other times it's a flyer for a, a program they designed or screen grabs of some of the catalog records that they created. It really varies by project uh, and we're not too picky about what those deliverables look like. So if I've piqued your interest, please explore our WordPress site for more information. This is linked here as well as in some of the resources that uh, documents that will be made available to you. Um, and if you're interested, even after hearing all this and looking through this WordPress site, please reach out to me. You can contact me at sarah.pratt at simmons.edu with questions or uh, with your interest. And I would love to hear from you. I'd love to answer those questions. And thank you so much for your time and um, attention. And again, I'm sorry that I couldn't join you today, but I hope you have a wonderful conference and I hope you enjoy the rest of the panel. Um, and I'll hand it off to my lovely panelists. Thanks so much.